name is Krista Machado. I'm the Vice President of the Culinary Club, and I'm here interviewing Chef Nathan Ryan. He's an Emmy-nominated chef, and he's known for his fresh ingredients and for Sorry. his um, simple, innovative cuisine. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> it's really a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I want to ask you a couple of questions and just answer okay. to the rest of your abilities. Shoot it. Um, why did you decide to become a chef? Why did I decide? Yes. You know, since I was really young, I've always understood just the power of food. I mean, um, I'm the youngest of three boys. I'm from here in Arlington, Virginia. And, and I noticed from a very young age that if I was cooking or helping in the kitchen, my brothers wouldn't pick on me. <laughs> so part of it was survival, but part of it was like a certain respect that I gained from my brothers and that later on became with my friends. And I just thought, you know, being a chef is, is a very cool thing, but it didn't, it didn't start out that way. It started out with a health science degree from James Madison. And then I was an artist along the way. Uh, I did, um, I was a medical technician. And I was just sort of all over the place, but I always kept coming back to being a chef. So, uh, so yeah, when I was in my low 30s, I finally pulled the trigger and Great. went to Le Cordon Bleu. Uh, I did um, sculpture, painting, drawing. I would take classes at the uh, Torpedo Factory, the Corcoran in DC. Uh, and even at James Madison, I started, I was a stained glass artist, did photography. I did my own photography for my cookbook. Um, yeah, and art, and, and the thing is, what's really cool is that this is just art that you happen to eat. It's culinary arts. Right. <laughs> and it just, it stays in the art field. So I'm super happy about That's that. That's amazing. What life lessons, le lessons have you learned because of being a chef? You know, being a chef has to do with uh, patience. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably number one. Uh, you also have to be a, a certain type where you're almost a perfectionist. Nothing can slide by because the, the food that I prepare for my friends and family and also on television, um, it has to look really good. It has to make people want to make it. And that's essentially what I want to do. And, and uh, also being a chef is being a teacher. And with being a teacher, I have to be patient. Sure. And it's just the understanding that people can change and morph and they want to do good and you empower them with knowledge. And I think, you know, that whole knowledge is power thing that you learn as a, as a small child is absolutely true. So as a chef, I think that's, that's pretty much, that's it. Knowledge, power, and, uh, and patience. When did you decide to become an entrepreneur? You know, being, being, I worked at farmer's markets for 10 years in the morning, and then I would go straight to being a chef. So I was working 90 hours a week, and I thought, well, working for other people is great because I'm learning a lot. But it's not sustainable. I can't do 90 hours a week for my whole life. So then I decided to start cooking on television and then taking things in my own hands by going from Food Network and Discovery into being on PBS. And PBS is all about public education, it's public, um, public knowledge, public supported. And that's where I really shine. You know, being an entrepreneur is great because you have the flexibility and, um, and the freedom to do what you want within your own confines. You may not get a steady paycheck, right. but <laughs> you can be happy doing what you love. Well, being happy is the most important thing. So. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah, it is. While you were in culinary school, what was your favorite part of the education? Um, you know, in culinary school, I, I would say the best part was actually the people that I met. When you meet people that you click with that are sort of fighting the same fight, it, it's being a, being a chef in this field is not an easy job. It's, it's harder than being a medical technician. It's very strenuous on the body. And I think sort of moving through semesters and moving through the years in culinary school and meeting friends that I still have today and that are still in the field, and then, and then knowing that they have my back and I have their back, so you, you really um, develop some long-lasting friendships. So that's probably the best part about culinary school. Do you consider yourself more as a team leader or as a team worker? You know, both. I'm happy to take, if it's something that I, that I fully understand, um, like fabricating salmon or vegetables, definitely with vegetables and fruit, I take the reins because I know the most. Right. And that doesn't make me cocky. I just happen to have worked with farmers and I know exactly how things are grown, how you store them, how you prepare them. If it's something else, if it's, for example, seafood uh, or wild game, I let somebody else take the reins on that. So I think like the cream rises to the top and then whoever sort of presents themselves, if they're a good team leader and they're a good leader, I will follow them. Yeah. How has reality TV changed your life? Well, it's made it so I don't have to work 90 hours a week. Oh, that, was, that is lovely. Yeah, it makes it so I can have a relationship. That's, that's always good. Um, yeah, reality TV changed it because I, just, I was getting burned out, as this industry does, because you work right. really long hours. And, um, and, it, and it changed me in the way that it wasn't until 
I was on Food Network that I realized that I am a teacher. I never knew that I was a teacher. Other people told me that, but <clears throat> pardon me, but you have to discover it on your own. And that's when, like a good therapist, will tell you a certain thing, and then, it, and then it, a light goes on. And reality TV did that for me. And ever since Food Network, I've been doing reality television and teaching people how to cook ever since. It's very fulfilling. Would you still like to participate in competitions, like professionally? Absolutely not. No? No. Why? Is competitions that? are very stressful. Oh, yes, they are. <laughs> they, um, competitions, uh, the thing about reality television is it's not exactly reality, mm. because reality television is all about filming as many, as much stuff as possible. Like, there are four cameras here. Mm -hmm. And if you do four cameras over two weeks period of time, that is a lot of information, and they edit to make a story. I don't want to be a part of anyone else's story because the reality is I am who I am and I teach the way that I do. And uh, reality television has gone from people that I used to watch on television growing up. Um, they were all about education to now it's about trying to fabricate something with a spork or the, this is on fire and you have to jump through a hoop and that's not cooking. Right. It's entertainment. So reality television has gone from from education to entertainment. And I find myself, <clears throat> pardon me, entertaining, because it has to be entertaining, but at the end of the day, I really want people to be able to feed themselves, because most of us can't feed ourselves. We need to be able to feed ourselves. You know, it's cheaper, it's healthier. You know, you may, if you make an apple pie at home, it's going to be more delicious and healthier than any apple pie you get in the grocery store. So it's very, very empowering that you can cook some stuff, at least five dishes, very, very well. Um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's what I think I'm here for, is to teach people how to cook. Speaking to the students of the Art Institute, yeah. um, what advice would you give them, especially to the culinary mm. students? Part of your homework is to go out and eat. If you were to eat McDonald's every day, you will learn zero. Because McDonald's will always be the same. That's why they're the most successful restaurant in the world. If you go to Beijing, you go to Russia, you go anywhere you go in the world, a Big Mac will always taste like a Big Mac. That's consistency, and that's what's really important. In the culinary world, everything needs to look the same. Um, but when you cook the same stuff, you cease to grow as an artist. And as a culinary artist, it's your job to go out and do research. And the only way to do research is step outside of yourself. It's not, my food is my food, and I designed it, but I didn't design it for me. I designed it for other people to enjoy. Every ingredient you can find in a grocery store. I'm not going to use molecular gastronomy on television because people at home don't have that equipment. But people do know what salmon is, and they know what fennel is, and an apple and some cheese. And you can make something really beautiful and extravagant. So the best advice is to go out and continue your education by developing your palate. You need to eat food. It doesn't have to be fancy, mostly not fancy. Street food is amazing, just a regular hole in the wall joint, and then you then before you leave, ask them how they did that. Mm. You'd be surprised how many places will say, oh, I just used that secret thing at the Lebanese Taverna, which is one of my favorite places here. Ethiopian food, you have great ethnic food. Go out and try stuff you've never tried before. It will make you a better chef. Do not be comfortable, ever. If you're watching television, stop watching television. Because <laughs> now you should be reading. You should be drawing your knife skills. You always have an opportunity to better yourself. And so I barely watch TV. And when I eat something, I eat it and I love it. And if I get bored with it, because it's boring, like, like I said today in today's demo, tomato and red sauce, it's boring. It's the most boring dish ever. Three bites in, I've discovered nothing. So surprise me. Give your customers an element of surprise. Don't be weird, but give them an element of surprise. Do a different texture. Do a different technique. Try something different. Because if you know your food, you're not learning anymore. You need to not know something and then strive to attain that and have it be a part of you as a chef. Okay? Mm -hmm. Always grow. The trend nowadays is health, healthy choices, healthy, yep. a healthy living. Yep. So what advice would you give people if someone's looking for a healthy life choice? Okay, so healthy life choices are pretty easy. If you see a commercial, like a television commercial, or you see a commercial, an advertisement in a magazine for something, for food, don't eat it. Why not? Don't eat. It's not healthy. It's <laughs> processed. So if you're going to the farmer's market, farmers don't have any money to advertise. But McDonald's does, Double Whopper, whatever, Coca-Cola does. All those things are processed. If it has a label on it, it's not healthy. But here we go. Like this. Where's the label? Nowhere to be found. Where's the label? What's the label? It's just an apple. It's an apple. That's healthy. OK? 
okay? Whole foods are always gonna be healthier, always. That's an orange, that's cheese. Processed cheese, Velveeta, there's a lot of ingredients on that. That's just Parmesan. What's the ingredient? Parmesan, okay? So if you wanna eat healthier, eat real, real, real foods. So when you go into the grocery store, you stay in the perimeter, it's called perimeter shopping. I learned this at Nutrition 101 at James Madison University. <clears throat> so when you walk in the grocery store, you only stay on the perimeter, the outskirts of the grocery store, because that's where all the whole foods are. So if you're walking with me, you go in, you're like, oh, fruits and vegetables. There's seafood, there's meat, there's dairy, there's breads, there's grains, you're done. What's the stuff in the middle? It's all the canned stuff that you add water and this thing, that's not as healthy. It's a, really, it's a really simple thing, and once you have that knowledge and you walk into a grocery store and you see it with new eyes, then you're like, oh, this is easy, it's easy. It just takes more time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, convenience, convenience comes at a cost. It's usually the health of Americans. Convenience, it comes at a cost. But one more thing, really quick. If we all went to a fast food joint at five o'clock in the afternoon, and we counted the cars that were in the drive-through, it was like 20 cars. And you count the last car, and by the time that car drives through the drive-through, gets their food, it's about 18 minutes. 18 minutes, I can make salmon, a salad, pasta, anything you want. So really think about how you spend your time too, okay? Lastly, traveling yeah. to different countries, um, what have you learned about food? Have you, oh has that God. expanded your, your horizons? Yes, you learn everything about food. And it goes back to what I say about don't be, don't be bored with what you create. If I fully understand how to make that salad, I can have that salad in my Rolodex, but I want to learn how to make a different salad. What, what type of salad were they serving at that street vendor in Vietnam? I want to learn about those ingredients. Because you can get them here at different markets, I mean, not at Whole Foods or at Giant, but there are Asian markets that they have here, and they're fascinating. It's like, it's like Disneyland for chefs, and it's free. You don't have to buy anything, but you go around and just rub things and smell things, and if you don't know what they are, ask about them. And go out to international cuisines, ethnic foods, as much as possible. I mean, just, you just, the, the world is really your oyster. It just depends how much time you spend doing something. So if you're at home watching Celebrity Housewives of Who Cares, and you're spending three hours a week watching bleh, you should be spending three hours a week trying something. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just try something new, you know? You're t th this is all the time I have. I could be dead tomorrow. But I know if I die tomorrow, I'd be like, yeah, I made some good salads. <laughs> I cooked some really good fish, you know? I made a lot of people happy. So even though I'm on television, it's a little bit hypocritical, but I don't watch a lot of TV because when you watch television, you're watching someone else live their life to the fullest. So if I'm watching someone cook, I'm like, why am I watching them cook? I can cook. And then I turn the TV off and I cook. That's what life's all about. It's about experiences, guys. So if you've never been out of this country, get out of this country. You need to, I don't care where, it will give you a frame of reference for the rest of your life and you realize how much we have, how abundant everything is. Um, the, the different foods that we don't know. When I travel to another country, I know nothing. And I'm humbled by how little I know because that gives me an opportunity to grow so much more. And when I come back to the States, I'm blowing people's minds. Yeah. I know I am. I'm going to blow their minds <laughs> for chump change. Like, these are scraps, guys. I'm going to eat these later on, but they're all scraps. And I can make amazing dishes and charge you all $18.50 for it. <laughs> they're scraps. That's not a filet mignon. You know, you, use, you need to use oxtail, you need to use things that cost nothing, I'm sure you've heard this before, things that cost nothing and make magic from them. That's a true chef, is to take humble ingredients and make magic, not the most expensive stuff and make whatever, okay? It's all about learning. Thank you very much. Sir. Are we done? Yes. No, well that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Well thank you for your time. Thank you. And thanks you got for it. being with us. Thanks guys.